Hello and welcome to another lecture on integrals. Now we have already discussed about definite integrals in our previous segments of integrals. Now today we shall be discussing definite integrals as a limit of sum and later we are going to evaluate definite integrals as a limit of sums. Now so far we have regarded integration as an inverse of differentiation. The definite integral that is represented as integral of fx dx with the limit of a to b has been defined as equal to phi b minus phi a where phi x is any function such that phi dash x is equal to fx. Now we are going to show that a definite integral can also be represented as the limit of sum of certain number of terms when the number of terms tends to infinity and each term tends to zero. For that let us consider fx is a continuous function in the interval a b where a and b are finite and b is greater than a and if the interval a b b divided into n equal parts each of width h such that n h is equal to b minus a then limit h tending to 0 bracket h into f a plus f a plus h plus f a plus 2 h up to f a plus n minus 1 h is called as the definite integral of f x between the limits a and b and is written as integral from a to b f x dx. Thus we have integral from a to b fx dx equal to limit of h tending to 0 h into f a plus f a plus h up to f a plus n minus 1 h where n h is equal to b minus a. Thus we can rewrite the value of integral from a to b fx dx equal to limit h tending to 0 h into summation of from r tending to 0 to r tending to n minus 1 f a plus r h. It should be noted that h tends to 0 and n tends to infinity here. Next we are going to consider a numerical problem that would be based on definite integrals as the limit of sum. Now we have a problem in which we are required to evaluate the following integral as a limit of sum. Now we have the integral as integral with the limits of 1 to 3, 2x plus 3 with respect to x. Now let us suppose that a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 3. Then n h is equal to 3 minus 1 that is equal to 2 since n h is equal to b minus a. Then integral of 2x plus 3 with respect to x with the limit of 1 to 3 is equal to limit of h tending to 0 h into f of 1 plus f of 1 plus h up to f into 1 plus n minus 1 into h. This gives us limit of h tending to 0 h into f1 is equal to by putting the values of a equal to 1 we have f1 equal to 5 plus f1 plus h is equal to 5 plus 2h plus up to f1 plus n minus 1 into h which is equal to 5 plus 2 into n minus 1 into h. Now since 
f1 is equal to 5 f1 plus h which is equal to 5 plus 2h therefore integral 1 to with limits 1 to 3 2x plus 3 with respect to x is equal to limit of h tending to 0 h into 5n plus 2h plus 4h up to 2 into n minus 1 into h which is equal to limit of h tending to 0 h into 5n plus 2 into 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n minus 1 into h which means that this integral has a value of limit h tending to 0 h into 5n plus 2 into n into n minus 1 divided by 2 into h where we have got the result n into n minus 1 by 2 by the summation series of 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n minus 1 terms which can be rewritten as limit h tending to 0 5 nh plus nh into nh minus h next substituting the value of nh equal to 2 we have the value of the integral with the limit 1 to 3 2x plus 3 dx is equal to limit h tending to 0 5 into 2 plus 2 into 2 minus h which gives us the value as 10 plus 4 which is equal to 14. That's the value of the integral with the limit 1 to 3 2x plus 3 with respect to x is equal to 14. With this we conclude this lecture on integrals which was based on definite integrals as the limit of a sum.